Howdy ho, Mapleers, and welcome to Kana, our last pre-Battle Mage 250. We're finally done with all of my 250s prior to making videos, and we're finally at Kana, the world's most popular class, at least reboot world. <laughs> For the gear, as with all of the other older 250s, I've unequipped gear so that the stats are similar to what they would be for my normal training gear. And in Kana's case, that's quite a lot of gear being stripped away because I funded Kana a little bit further beyond 250 to make the Kana Compendium, which is a gigantic video showing all of the rotations for Kana in pretty much every viable map that'll be released shortly after this video. But for the gear, nothing too outrageous. Just Star Force set and my average int. My my two fans are okay. <laughs> They're not amazing. I was going to originally use the fan I have on Haku as my main hand fan, but I got unlucky and tiered up to legendary and then just extra unlucky in rolling magic attack lines. So we kind of had to swap things around, but it's not too bad. And for the Haku fan, it's just two lines of magic attack and two lines of flat magic attack on the B-pot. Nothing too insane, but it was what I was aiming for, for like my main hand and offhand fan. For your inner ability, ideally you want Mace to obtain. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be using Kana as your farmer, ideally you want to have 20% Mesa. Kana is pretty much the best farmer in the game, and it's what she's used for by most people. So that first line ideally wants to be 20% Meso. However, for Kana specifically, since this is a class that is most often made at the start of accounts, I would highly recommend, especially if you're in reboot servers, roll for your second line first, because Kana's base crit rate sucks big dick. <laughs> and unless your account is already well established for Legion and Lynx, you're not going to be able to easily get to 100% crit chance. So I would say if you're in reboot, use circulators until you get a decent second line of crit rate, and then use honor to reroll for your main line for drop rate. If you're not using your Kana as a farmer, I believe you want 20 boss crit rate and percent damage to debuffed enemies. Kinda similar to most other classes in Kana's position. For the V Matrix, right where it should be, in front of domain, decent holy symbol, the better skill. We all know it. We all saw it coming. EXP, drop rate, 100% uptime, fantastic. Always want it. Then of course, you have your only skill that technically needs to be boosted for Akana, and one I would recommend focusing on boosting, Spirit's Domain. Domain is everything for Kana post fifth job. It is your support ability, your burst ability, your mobbing ability, your loot rotation ability, Domain fills every checkbox in every situation for Kana. It's got really really good uptime for mobbing, it's got an absolutely gargantuan hitbox, even though the animation fades after a short distance, and it offers up a ton of damage for bossing parties. This skill single-handedly is the reason that people are way more likely to carry Kanas through bosses well before they're able to actually participate. This skill is super, super unbalanced. <laughs> it makes Benediction look like a joke. It's fantastic. Highly recommend maxing it out if you can afford to. If you can't, it's okay. It's perfectly salvageable at lower levels. You just get increased uptime on it. For your boost nodes, oh boy. Kana's almost in a situation like Hayato, except in Kana's situation, most of your skills are useful. <laughs> so, you have three sets of trios, but don't specifically look for perfect trios, because that just ain't gonna happen. I believe I only got one perfect set of trios, which was Yosuzume, Shikigami Doppelganger, and Vanquisher's Charm. Other than that, just make sure you have all of the important skills covered. Your Tengu Strike, your Kishin, Nine Tails Fury, Exorcist Charm, Shikigami Haunting, and you're good to go. <laughs> you're gonna have to bust out a spreadsheet for this one, unless you get really lucky. It's tedious, but it's the best way to approach this. Just make sure you have everything covered. Perfect trios, forget those even exist. Just like Hayato. Perfect trios aren't what we're going for. For the other Kana-specific skills, you have Yukiona, which is one of your summons. 
she's kind of lackluster, which is a shame, because after the Kana rework, this was my absolute favorite skill Kana had, because I just love the animations, I like the, the summon. But she really doesn't offer all that much. <laughs> the most important thing about Yuki is that she reduces the mana cost of your other skills. Her damage isn't amazing for bossing, her mobbing isn't amazing, her mobbing can actually be detrimental because she can't actually proc Night Ghost Guide herself. So she's kind of in this weird spot where you throw her on just for saving on mana, <laughs> which feels really bad. Or you just use her on cooldown and bossing for that little bit of extra damage. And I do mean a little bit. She's not going to be pumping out big numbers. In the big number realm. <laughs> Liberated Spirit Circle. This skill I would 100% take off of your V-Matrix if you're training. It's entirely detrimental. There are very few maps where you actually want to have this on because this skill will chaos so many mobs that you will lose Kishin uptime because this doesn't proc Night Ghost Guide as well. For bossing, this is a ton of additional damage lines. The damage lines themselves aren't that big, so the overall damage contribution Spirit Circle gives isn't going to be like in the top 50% of abilities, but it is very nice additional damage. For mobbing, it can be really useful in reg servers on Frenzied Spawn. This is actually helpful, but since I didn't train my Kana with a Frenzy at all, since she already had a built-in spawn booster, I felt it was a waste way back then, and I still feel it's kind of a waste now, until you get to the higher levels, but... This skill, for the most part, if you're training, take it off. If you're bossing, slap it back on. And then my least favorite skill, their brand new 4th V. Great Oni Lord's Legion. I absolutely hate how ugly this is. <laughs> it makes looking at maps so awful. There's no way to turn off the animation and it takes up the entire background. In some areas it can actually make platforms hard to see as well. It just, I don't like it. It doesn't offer very much damage for bossing. Really, the only thing this does is you throw this on when domain is on cooldown so that you can do loot cycles without dropping a bunch of mob kills. Or in bossing, you just throw it on on cooldown for a little bit of extra damage. Not a huge fan. <laughs> and then, of course, True Erected Reflection. You get it for completing the Will storyline. Decent mobbing, decent bossing, it's another summon to throw on top of your Lucent Soul while training, so slap it on when you get it, it's helpful. And Sengoku Force. Much like Yuki Ona, this skill really doesn't have a solid place for Kana. It does mob well, but on, on Kana's Kishin spawn rate, you don't want it mobbing at all because this doesn't proc Night Ghost Guide. This is going to make your Kishin fall off because you're not actively proccing Night Ghost to keep it active. So really, you're only using this along with Yuki when you're doing loot cycles, but not all loot cycles, because you can't right-click to deactivate these abilities like Oni Lord. You can just use the skill again to turn it off once you're done looting. These skills stay on their entire duration. Like, you can't even click away their icon to get them to go away. Now nah, they're just always there. So it's actually fairly rare when I would recommend using these for your loot cycles. Unless you're in larger maps that actually take time to get around and loot. These are more often than not going to be detrimental to your Kishin uptime, which is going to hurt your rates overall. So it's kind of in that weird spot where you're using it on cooldown for bossing. Just extra damage. But it's very niche use for mobbing. Which is... A shame because of how good of a mobbing seal Sengoku Force actually is. And of course, the two decent skills. Decent sharp buys, decent speed infusion, bonus crit rate. Kana needs a lot of that, and I mean a lot of that. And crit damage. Crit damage doesn't apply to your summons, but it's always a good thing to have because when you're bossing both Tengu and Shikigami Haunting, as well as Doppelganger, your Yosuzumes, everything else works with crit damage, it's just your summons. So for mobbing, the crit damage isn't really all that useful, but for bossing, absolutely want it. And of course, attack speed. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> so, as I mentioned, if you're going to be training, take off your liberated mana circle. Seriously, take it off. 
I would honestly recommend for some players as well, just take off Yuki and Sengoku forces so you don't accidentally cast them. But you got better impulse control than me and don't just press keys on cooldown. That's probably not a huge problem. Now for 200 until 205, I'm gonna be blatant with you. Vanishing Journey sucks dick. Big dick. <laughs> You would be surprised how many summons Kana has, and those maps are still too big and sparsely populated with mobs for it to get really good rates on Kishin speed. I would highly recommend either just staying in Fez 2, Fez 3, whichever future Parion map you like, or you can go to my recommended map, the Fox Valley Treetop 3. Thanks to doing the Kana Compendium, I was actually able to get back to all of these lower level areas and do proper battle analyses for them because when I originally did Kana, it was before her revamp. <laughs> so I was panicking thinking they were going to make Kana terrible so I just speed ran through Kana to 236 before the revamp hit and boy did I miss out because revamped Kana is pretty jacked. Fox tree top path 3 effectively, you just want to set down your boss on the right side, set down Kishin up on that top platform where the boss doesn't hit, and then you just teleport up and down using Shikigami Haunting. Now for the most part, almost all of my rotations are going to primarily be using Shikigami Haunting and not Exorcist Charm because just from my testing, Shikigami Haunting is way more consistent at keeping Kishin up over 100% of its cooldown, whereas Exorcist Charm is quite hit or miss unless you're able to use left-right Haunting and then Exorcist Charm. But this map is pretty crazy, especially for Kana on Kishin speed, this is like 21,000 mobs per hour. And in these low levels, you don't have to worry about loot cycles at all if you don't want to, so you can even push that further. It's pretty crazy for your EXP, and it'll get you into Reverse City way better than the Vanishing Journey maps. Trust me, I tested them. <laughs> they suck. But for Reverse City, we've got two new contenders. For Kana, the best map for Reverse City is the Hidden Underground Train. Ooh, not the Hidden Research Train. Blasphemy, you say. But this map actually turns out to be better for Kana overall, especially if you're on Kishin spawn. Now for this map, you definitely don't need a Lucid Soul. You just set down your Kishin on the left side, set down boss on that platform, and then you just stand on this platform and attack everything around you with the Shikigami Haunting. Now if you're strong enough that your Yosuzumes and your, your Hyper Bubble are able to kill mobs, you don't have to turn around to kill these mobs because you have enough random ticks of damage that'll get over to them and they won't affect your overall kill rate too terribly much, but probably just get in the habit of turning around and killing them. Especially on Kishin speed, you have enough downtime between waves of spawn that you can just spend the extra minor effort of turning around and attacking. But for Kana, a lot of people, this is their first character, so maybe they don't have the arcane force for these hidden maps. I also have the recommendation of the Subway Tunnel 5. This map is surprisingly jacked with mobs. <laughs> Pretty crazy how many mobs per hour you'll get in this map, especially for such a low level area. But similar to the hidden underground train, Kishin on the bottom platform, boss right above it, and then you're just on this side of the map teleporting up and down Shikigami Haunting to maintain your Kishin. Usually you'll be able to get out both full durations of your boss before you have to reset Kishin. And again, since these are low level areas, you don't have to worry about looting. But if you wanted to loot, just drop Domain on this right side while you go do your loot cycles. Between Domain and the summons, you'll have 100% uptime on full map clearing, and it's really, really good. <laughs> and it'll get you in to 215 so that you can get on to Yum Yum Island. For Yum Yum Island, again, I'll have two recommendations, both one for funded and unfunded players. For the funded players, your best bet, surprisingly, not the Hidden Iliard Field, but the Hidden Mushbad Forest. Shocker. This map has slightly more mobs than the Hidden Iliard Field. It's just quite a bit longer, so a lot of classes don't ideally want to train here. But it's literally the same rotation. The only thing I do not like about this is that your teleport will never put you on that middle platform, so unless your barrier or your Yosuzumes are doing enough damage to kill those, it can be quite obnoxious to clear those mobs. <laughs> but the kill rate here is insane, 
you don't need terribly much funding to clear here, especially for Kana since your Shikigami hunting is counted as a first job skill, it gets a ton of final damage from your boost nodes. So early on you could just stack up extra Shikigami hunting boost nodes to get a ton of extra damage out of it. But if you have the kill rate for this, this will net you the most EXP. It's not as many mobs per hour as the as the unfunded recommendation, but the base EXP difference will make this a faster training area. But if you're actually meso farming in these level ranges, which I wouldn't recommend, since these levels go so quickly, you shouldn't really focus on meso farming until you hit Latulin. But if you're unfunded or if you do want to start early on meso farming, I would highly recommend Fungo Forest 4. What a Fungo Forest recommendation! I know, it's surprising. This map is actually pretty crazy. It's sort of unbearable to loot <laughs> because the platforms are all over the place. But if you have a back pet still somehow and you're okay with it, this map is pretty good. You set down Kishin on the left side, drop down, set boss on the far right of that platform, and then you'll just be teleporting up and down between this platform. If your Yosuzumes and Barrier aren't strong enough to tag the mobs behind you, just turn around on the top and bottom of your rotation. One really nice thing about this map is you're effectively double platting both sides, like at the top of the platforms you're double platting, and at the bottom you're double platting if you have to attack to the right. It's very handy, it's very, very good kills per hour. It's pretty insane how many mobs are actually in this map when I got around to testing it. I wasn't expecting really any of the Fungo Forest maps to provide any good numbers and then this one just jumped out with how much better it was than the rest of the non-hidden maps for this level range. But this is a great place to train, a little unbearable to loot, but you'll get through these levels A-OK -okay, and you'll get into the first of the overpowered maps for Kana. 2.20 until 2.30, I would highly recommend Outlaw Street 2. It is just by far the best of the Outlaw Streets, but if you're in Reboot, this map can be very, very hard to find. It has by far the best kills per hour, but it also has the most players vying for its attention because of how good it is. Set your summons up on the right, and again, since I want to maintain Kishin uptime as like my top priority, I focus solely on using Shikigami Haunting. However, you can just attack left and right with Haunting and then throw an Exorcist Charm to tag the top and bottom mobs. A lot of people do this. It is a bit lazier, but you run the risk of not getting very many um, Night Ghost Guide procs, so your Kishin won't be extended over its cooldown duration. And this map is pretty crazy. If you ever need to do a loot cycle, you just drop domain underneath the platform you're sitting on, and you just keep your summons up, move around the map. It can be a bit tedious to get to all these platforms, but it's more than worth it for how many mobs you're actually killing. It's way worth it. If this map is too full, I would still recommend one of the Outlaw Streets, either 3 or 1. They are both significantly worse in terms of kills per hour, but they're still very good for your, for your level range. They don't take very much funding because they are lower level mobs, and these levels are going to fly by for Kana. Seriously, they will, they will just fly right by. <laughs> You'll get through into 2.30. No problem. And then in 2.30, I would honestly recommend just skipping Arcana entirely. I don't really like any of the maps. You can transition to Arcana if you find that fighting an Outlaw Street map is too hard, or if you just want to stay within two levels of the mobs you're fighting for that extra 20% bonus EXP. But none of the maps in Arcana are that good besides Side Path and Upper Path, and Upper Path is full of zero botters. If you're in reg servers, and it's probably still fairly full in reboot, and side path is full of Kana butters, so your options are fairly limited <laughs> when it comes to our Kana maps that are actually decent. So I would recommend just staying in Outlaw Street 2 until 2.30. Don't worry, you're gonna get to 2.30 still insanely fast. The amount of mobs per hour in Outlaw Street more than make up for its low level mobs. So for 2.30, until 235 or 240, whichever you choose, I would highly recommend any of the Shadow Dance Hall maps. Primarily though, Shadow Dance Hall 2. 
It's the easiest of the Shadow Dance Halls to clear, and it also gets the best rate. This is definitely where I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself a Relentless Attack Boost node, because you are going to be using Lucid Soul from here on out. For any maps that are beyond Latchlin, I would recommend getting a Lucid Soul and using it. It's another summon that'll help out your EXP rates and your farming rates exponentially. For your Lucid Soul, you set her over here on the right side because it has the least amount of mobs for her to deal with. You set down Kishin on the right side or on the left side of the map, and then you set boss facing left. And then from here, you can just Shikigami haunting left, right, and then Exorcist charm. Again, since I was focused primarily on keeping up my Kishin uptime, I would just primarily use haunting to clear two platforms and then use Exorcist Charm to clear the top and bottom of the map. It just led to more Night Ghost Guide procs, making it more consistent. I'm not going to go through the full rigmarole of rotations for this map, because, again, I have the Kana Compendium that's coming out in a, in a, like at the same time as this, which goes through full rotations of this map, showing you how to get through loot cycles, how to move your summons around, and whatnot. So, this is where I would recommend staying. It's insane EXP. The Meso rates are really good if you do have that Meso gear. It's going to be really, really good for your bottom line as a Kana. But again, it is very, very popular. So if you find troubles finding a map here, you can honestly still stay in the Outlaw Streets until 235, but I would recommend maybe trying to find a side path or an upper path first to get yourself to 235, and then on into Esfera. For Esfera, I would honestly recommend MTS7 over the competition. Like, MTS3 and MTS4 are both good, but MTS7 is just more consistent. But in being more consistent, it is more popular. So MTS3 and 4 are good alternatives if you want. For MTS7, your Lucid Soul goes on the left side. Kishin effectively just goes right underneath it. Your boss goes in the middle here, facing towards the right. And then you kind of stand over here attacking left and right with Shikigami Haunting and using Exorcist Charm to clear the things below you. This map can have some problems with Kishin uptime because there are so few mobs that you're actually hitting with Shikigami Haunting that you're relying more on Exorcist Charm, but through my testing, through doing battle analyses and rate chests, it was about like 95% Kishin uptime even with doing loot cycles, so it is manageable if a bit more active than some of the other areas. And this will get you on into 240 and into your next holy ground as a Kana. Seamless transition! <laughs> we ran into the best of Kana's features, the imminent random crash. But for PD5, this is my recommended map for 240 until 245. For your summons, you want to ideally set up Lucid Soul on the left side's top there, set down your boss on the bottom facing left since he'll hit two platforms and then you will just teleport up and down along these three platforms using Shikigami Haunting to kill any of those mobs there. Let's set down Lucid now that we have charges and this will effectively have 100% of time on your your Kishin as well as providing some pretty solid kills per hour for a Celis map. It's definitely not as good as Shadow Dance Hall 2, but it is far less popular, so you'll be much, much easier of a time finding a map here than in Shadow Dance Hall 2. So I would highly recommend this, and this will carry you on into Moonbridge. A-OK, -okay, easy peasy. The rates are pretty good. It's very easy to full loot, surprisingly. It might look a bit tricky at first, but the rotations are fairly easy once you get them down. And for Moonbridge, 240 until 245, you've got The Last Horizon 6. For as big of a map as this is, it's actually surprisingly easy to maintain and to loot. Having a vac pet definitely improves your rates, but it is not a requirement. Using your Lucid skill, using Relentless Attack for a specialty node, and then using your Will skill on top of Lucid effectively means you'll be full clearing this, no problem. For your summons, Do or Kishin, right underneath the ladder, Lucid, and your will skill if you have it, over there. Your boss is on this platform, facing left since he can double plat, and then you are standing here, left right haunting, and then Exorcist Charm. If you're worried about Kishin uptime, you can just use haunting to the right and teleport up once, and then use Exorcist Charm. You're hitting more mobs, so you're getting more chances of proccing Night Ghost Guide. It's just a bit more consistent, it is more clicks. 
Using left right exorcist charm didn't really have too much downtime, but in case your loot cycles run long, in case you have to reset summons at an awkward time, what have you, maybe an elite boss spawns or something, and your summons get all desynced, that is an alternative to maintain your Kishin just that little bit extra time. Because having those extra seconds actually can matter sometimes, especially when doing loot cycles where you're not actively using Shikigami Haunting to maintain your Kishin. Having those few extra seconds of uptime from manually using Haunting to clear the mobs definitely comes in handy. But this map is insane. Honestly, it is absolutely insane. Some of the Meso rates coming out of Reboot from this map are approaching the like 1 bill per hour rate. <laughs> and that is absurd. But I can absolutely see why. The map is completely filled with mobs. It is very easy to clear as a Kana. And it's pretty easy to loot, surprisingly. But that's where I would recommend you staying until 250. Honestly, probably until 255 too. Like, some of the Labyrinth of Suffering maps are pretty A-OK -okay for Kana. But if you can get your hands on an LH6, you're not going to be missing out on too much more EXP. And that'll carry you right into Limina, into the next great Kana areas, I'm sure. But that's effectively Kana's training. For more extensive rotations on the maps that I showed, as well as tons and tons of alternatives for maps I didn't show, check out the Kana Compendium. <laughs> it was like 200 hours worth of map testing and video editing. So hopefully that's helpful. But that's been Kana's mobbing. For the bossing, I touched on it at the start. Kana is one of the most carryable classes in the game thanks to Domain. This skill is honestly <laughs> so overpowered. <laughs> it's absurd. It's one of the best party buffs in the game. And it's on one of the best classes in the game. Not to mention Kana is the only class in the game with a 15 second bind, as well as it being a 90 second cooldown bind. <laughs> Kana is literally living on Easy Street USA. I'm not even kidding. This class excels at everything she does. <laughs> she literally took Phantom's Jack of All Trades title and then put Master of All at the end because Kana does not struggle. Your damage is good. Your supporting abilities are good. Your mobbing is good. Everything about Kana is good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why she is the most played class in the game. As well, because she has Kishin. The most overpowered skill to ever grace the game. And the sole reason why we are in such a Kana-defined meta. Uh, Kishin's introduction to the game, while at first was kind of benign and seen as like a cute little quirk of the class, quickly devolved into being the most game warping and meta defining ability ever to be released. This skill single handedly brought us down the path that would then lead to a frenzy totem being invented. <laughs> Kana quite literally shaped the entirety of Maple Story around her from her release, and we've never been able to escape her graphs since then. She is a very polarizing class. Some people love her, some people absolutely abhor her. She has sparked many a movement among players with the the Kana meta for reboot for Meso farming, the hashtag no farm gang, abolishing Kana play. But lover her hater, Kana's not going anywhere. <laughs> Like, for the foreseeable future, until we start getting content 300+, plus, I doubt Kishin's going to get touched in the slightest. I hardly, hardly believe they're gonna gut Kana, because it seems the JMS classes are immune to getting nerfed like Beast Tamer does. <laughs> Kana and Hayato have been overpowered for a very long time, and there doesn't seem to be any toning down in the future until 300+, plus content starts coming out, but... Uh, do prepare, this might just be me being a worrywart, but for 300 plus Kana, TMS has said that all non-KMS content that they've added to the game will no longer work in 300 plus areas, which, if we're going off of TMS, their Kana's Kishin does not increase spawn rate, so if we do bring over that 
so that none of our non-KMS stuff works in 300 plus areas. There may be a future where Kana no longer has a spawn booster on Kishin. Then what? Well, you still have one of the best farmers in the game! <laughs> Kana, even without Kishin, is still fantastic, let me tell you. She's still just as good of a support, she's still just as good of a bosser for damage, she's still just as good of a mobber even without Kishin. Should that future come to pass, Kana's not going to die off anytime soon, so this is still a class that's very good as a potential main. As well, like just your damage output alone, Vanquisher's Charm is so goddamn good. <laughs> It is on a 60 second cooldown. It is a five line hurricane. Like, Kana is not going to die if she loses Kishin. If anything, it's just going to kill off the Kana necessity of GMS. Which, who knows? That might even be a good thing. But, let's not get too grim and dark about the future, right? This is supposed to be a happy video about Kana. I would still highly recommend playing Kana, especially if you're in Reboot. If you want to progress quickly, Kana's about the only way to do so. She does have built-in Kishin, she's the only class in the game with that spawn booster, unfortunately. So she's just the de facto best farmer ever for Reboot. For Reg servers, Kana is still just as good, but not as necessary. If you want to farm items for yourself early on, and you don't have like a steady source of meso income to afford frenzy service, Kana is still a great go-to. She mobs fantastically, her rotations are fairly simple, they don't require very much funding, and she gets some surprisingly good rates for not using frenzied spawn in reg servers. I trained my Kana to 250 without moving my frenzy over, and I didn't feel like it slowed down that much at all. It definitely wasn't like peak mechanic or zero EXP rates, but it was still steady enough that I never felt like Kana was struggling to level. So I would still recommend Kana. Even with potential nerfs in the future, the way out future, we're still a long ways from 300 plus content, don't worry. We got like two years. In the future, if she does get nerfed, I would still probably recommend Kana. The only skill I take umbrage with is the Oni Lord, because I just wish I could like right click this ability to make the animation go away. I hate the background that it changes to, it's too busy. It makes the game hard to look at. <laughs> but that's my personal preference. I hope you guys like Kana. I know it's very polarizing to say, but I do like Kana. I think she's a fun, fun class to play. She's got amazing mobility, she's great at bossing, she's great at mobbing. She's got a really fun kit to use. The voice acting on Kana is incredible. Same with Hayato. Both of the Japanese voice actors did a fantastic job. They still aren't annoying, and I've been playing Kana effectively for 250 hours over these last two weeks. It's a great class. I would highly recommend playing it. I would highly recommend if you are going to play it, check out the Kana Compendium. Again, it goes through pretty much every viable map Kana has in the Arcane River all the way up until 250. And you're probably going to need those alternatives, especially if you're in Reboot. Kana is, what is it now, like 52% of the player base. So yeah, she's a very popular one. <laughs> I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions about Kana, about my journey to getting all classes to 250, or about playing MapleStory in general, feel free to ask down below. I make it a point to answer any and all questions you guys might have in these videos, because I love this game. I hope it keeps on growing. <laughs> See you next time.